good afternoon viewers welcome all of you to yet another live show at specialist hospital today we are back with another interesting topic which you should all be well aware of the golden hour management of acute head trauma victims what are the do's and don'ts and the early signs that you need to recognize joining us today on our live session we have dr hv satish babu a senior consultant neurosurgeon and specialist in head and spine trauma care at specialist hospital welcome dr satish thank you uh, since we are talking about the golden hour what are the present head trauma scenarios we have in india Uh, well uh, india has the dubious distinction of having the uh, some of the highest numbers of uh, road traffic accidents and um, uh, nearly a million about 10 lakh people are generally affected every year annually and of this uh, it said that about a lakh of them lose their precious lives and uh, if you compare it to other uh, developed countries in india one in every six uh, people who have acute uh, head injuries lose their lives whereas in the us one in every 200 lose their lives so that's a very wide disparity in addition to that if you look at the scenario in, in bangalore city itself about 7000 to 7500 accident cases are reported of which about 700 to 750 people lose their lives so that you can understand the grim scenario of the road traffic accident and head trauma uh what are the ways in which a person can have acute head trauma Uh, well as you all are aware the commonest uh, cause is the road traffic accident where uh, a, a person can have a simple head injury to a complex uh, head injury scenario um, the other common uh, cause is a history of fall from different heights maybe at the construction site or from uh, in a domestic scenario and uh, thirdly uh, the commonest cause is due to violence either a physical assault and sometimes we also have domestic injuries where children fall from different heights or slip and fall at home and we also have industrial accidents and uh, of late uh, sometimes we come across gunshot injuries and if we have uh, in, in a war scenario they can have war injuries so this kind of th- these are all the common causes of uh, head injuries uh, while we talk about head head injury what are the types of head injuries well uh, the commonest head injury is what is called as concussive head injury wherein there is uh, for a brief period the brain uh, ceases to function where the patient will have uh, brief loss of consciousness and then gain the consciousness immediately and then uh, if, if the impact is much more severe they can have what is called as contusion wherein the surface of the brain gets injured and there's some sort of a laceration in the brain and which most often needs admission in the icu and some of them may need surgery and third uh, possibility is uh, intracerebral hematoma where the hematoma or the blood clot can be outside the brain but within the skull sometimes it can be outside the brain but within the covering of the brain and sometimes it can happen within the brain tissue and the next type of injury is the skull fracture which all of you are aware it could be some a small linear fracture which generally heals by itself and sometimes they can also have depressed fractures or fragments if the impact is more severe which may need surgical treatment uh when a person um a, a has an head injury what are the symptoms uh, or signs that they will experience uh whenever there is an impact on the head which results in a head injury if it's a concussion they can have a brief loss of consciousness which they regain immediately sometimes at the site of the accident if the impact is more they can have an epilepsy or a fit which is called as a post traumatic epilepsy and sometimes they can have intense headache with vomiting blurring of vision sometimes double vision and sometimes they can have facial deviation or weakness of one side of the limbs difficulty in walking and sometimes they can have alteration in their consciousness where they're confused sometimes sometimes deeply unconscious or sometimes they are comatose right at the time of the impact of the injury and how long after a head injury can these symptoms occur uh, as i said sometimes the symptoms can occur instantly if the impact is very severe instantly we can find them lose consciousness occasionally what happens is they lose consciousness regain consciousness and then go back home and then again get worsened and then come back to the hospital which is called as the lucid interval in some people by about 6 to 8 hours as the brain pressure increases they can develop newer symptoms of headache vomiting drowsiness and sometimes they may suddenly stop breathing which may need to be you know put on a ventilator and treated so from few seconds or minutes from the following impact to couple of hours to couple of days symptoms can progress in acute head injuries 
How can one tell if a head injury is mild or severe? Uh, well, that is internationally, there is something what is called as a Glasgow Coma Score, where most uh, medical professional and uh, uh, caregivers know where uh, the scoring is done based upon the best eye response, best um, limb or the motor response, and the best, best verbal response. Uh, we grade them according to the scoring pattern, where we call it as a mild head injury, a moderate, or a severe. In case of mild head injuries, generally there is consciousness is well maintained. In moderate head injuries, they are sort of semi-conscious. And in uh, severe head injuries, most often they are deeply unconscious or sometimes very comatose also. So these are the three ways in which we segregate the patients with acute head trauma. Uh, what would be the first aid treatment for head injury patients? Uh, what's important for a common man or a person at the site of the accident to know is that as soon as they notice a, an accident, it is important that not many people go in and surround and rush around the patient and this redu reduces the oxygenation. Uh, that's available, number one. Number two is it is very, very important to call for help immediately because uh, the, the time that is spent at the site of the accident should be to the least minimum and the patient or the victim should get to a hospital at the earliest. If there is a, a site of injury on the scalp or on the head where there is bleeding, uh, a clean cloth can be applied and gentle pressure can be applied and it should not be very firm or it should not be very hard because it could be an underlying fracture which could cause more damage than help. Next, in case there is uh, d difficulty in breathing or he has stopped breathing, you have to initiate what is called as cardiopulmonary resuscitation or the CPR. All in all, what is important is that at the site, people should act swift and should be fast. Call for an ambulance brigade or calls, call for a police or some uh, help so that the patient can be shifted immediately to a hospital where there is intensive care uh, facility or there is a neurosurgical care. That's very important. Uh, what is the golden hour concept in trauma? Well, in, in, in accidents, there is what's called as a golden hour uh, concept where uh, th this is a term that was uh, uh, started, uh, initiated way back in 1970s uh, from the Baltimore Trauma Institute where they, ca they came out with a paper which said that uh, the uh, outcome of a patient following a trauma is better if the patient is shifted to a center where there is a neurosurgical care for head injury treatment and if it is initiated within the first 60 minutes his chance of survival are high from then on this concept of golden hour has come the golden hour does not mean always 60 minutes it could be from few minutes to a couple of hours so the sooner the patient gets to a hospital where there is a uh, facility for neurosurgical care uh, the chances of him improving are higher so this is what's called the golden hour concept uh, why is the golden hour important in trauma uh, as I said, uh, the golden hour is very important because uh, the brain has to uh, be protected at the earliest and the patient should be shifted out of the site of the accident so that more harm is not caused. Thirdly, initiation of the treatment immediately within the first 60 minutes will prevent a longer hospital stay, will prevent loss of life, will prevent disabilities. So if you initiate treatment within the first 60 minutes to, any, uh, to an accident victim, he has a very high chance of improvement. So hence, it's very uh, important that we initiate things in the first 60 minutes. Thank you, Doctor. Uh, what is Platinum 10 Minutes concept in head trauma? Well, there, there's another concept which has uh, recently been uh, talked about. It's called as the Platinum 10 Minutes. Here, the time uh, is, is of importance. Here, if the patient is shifted out of the accident site within 10 minutes, of the pre-hospital stay, the chances of him getting the treatment is very high. Suppose there's an accident in a place and within 10 minutes, somebody has come there and shifted him to a safe place and initiated the treatment, his chance of survival are much better rather than wait for an hour or things like that. So platinum 10, 10 minutes concept is, is where the emphasis is laid on lesser stay at the site of the accident and lesser stay away from the hospital. What is the importance of the term second accident in acute head trauma care? Well, in, in neurosurgery, we, we always accept the fact that whenever there is an accident, because of the high velocity impact or the head injury, already the patient has undergone a first accident. The, whatever is the impact has been received on the brain, that injury has, has manifested. 
so the onus is on the the caregivers and the doctors and the nurses to prevent another accident occurring on it's like adding salt to the wound so we all know the brain is a very selfish organ where it needs continuous blood flow continuous oxygenation continuous glucose so if we deny this treatment immediately after an accident we would be causing a further damage to the brain this is what is called as a second accident the onus is on the healthcare professionals to prevent a second accident and if this is done the chances of survival chances of having post traumatic sequelae chances of being disabled for a long duration chances of a long hospital stay is reduced so that's why the emphasis on prevention of second accident uh, what would be the treatment approaches in acute head trauma in a pre hospital accident site Uh, in a pre accident uh, hospital site uh, pre hospital stay there is always a concept where the uh, ambulance brigade that is stationed in the uh, vicinity of the accident will have facilities for resuscitation will have facilities for you know initiating simple measures so uh, before the patient reaches the hospital if the uh, healthcare givers could initiate uh, things like abc of uh, trauma like airway is taken care of the breathing is taken care of and circulation is taken care of there's a chance that he may not uh, have a further damage to his brain so the emphasis now is that the ambulance is, should be well equipped it should have all the facilities to initiate the treatment at the site of uh, the trauma suppose he has had an epilepsy the airway securing is important suppose he is having excessive bleeding compression on the area of the injury is important suppose he has lost blood and is in a shock getting an iv access immediately at the site in the ambulance is important so these are the measures which are important by the time the patient reaches the hospital for a definitive care uh, how is an acute head trauma victim treated at the hospital well in hosp- most hospitals as soon as the patient who has a acute head trauma arrives uh, an immediate triaging is done where uh, very few minutes is uh, uh, wasted on trying to get the details we know Uh, there is a glasgow coma scale to assess the severity of the head injury and we decide whether it's a mild head injury may uh, moderate or a severe head injury in most often if it's a mild head injury patients are admitted for observation so that they get well by a couple of hours if there is further deterioration in his neurological status he may go down to a uh, step down to become a moderate head injury where we may have to uh, subject him to ct scans or mris or various other tests if the person has got a moderate head injury no time is wasted in the emergency room he is straight away shifted to the intensive care unit where scans are done and then the neurosurgeon sees and he assesses whether he has a, a definitive uh, injury to the brain whether he needs any surgical intervention if it is a severe head injury uh, the immediate protocol is followed where he will have to be kept in the intensive care unit under uh, uh, ventilation which is a uh, controlled ventilation where uh, the concept of you know getting good oxygen supply good blood supply to the body and the brain and medications to prevent swelling of the brain and sometimes they may need surgery so these are all the steps which a patient uh, with a acute trauma goes through in a typical neurosurgical setup uh, as you have mentioned time is uh, key in any head trauma patients uh, so after treatment at the hospital how do the victims uh, progress uh, post treatment uh, well post treatment if, if the the treatment is in prompt uh, uh, way the most patients with concussive head injuries do very well in fact many of them just go home by a couple of hours or couple of days the moderate head injury patients some of them need surgical intervention so they may have to stay for a short time in the icu and they also do well over a period of time by about 6 to 12 weeks they generally tend to get back to their normal activities with some degree of supervision the patients who are in the severe head injury category will need long term icu care they can have other complications other than neurosurgical complications like lung infections or urinary tract infections or or for long stay on the ventilator and they generally need long term general nursing care on rehabilitation so if you look at head injury scenario such the mild head injury and the moderate injury majority of them do well the severe head injury patients once they are out of the icu they need uh, very close supervision and a lot of uh, rehabilitation and nursing care which generally takes couple of weeks to couple of months and the loss of life or the mortality is higher in the severe head injury group than in other groups 
Uh, thank you, Doctor. Uh, what would be your takeaway message to our viewers uh, for today's topic? Well, as a neurosurgeon, I would uh, my message would be that when uh, when the public sees a person uh, at a site with an acute uh, head trauma, it's very important for them to organize for help for the patient to be shifted to an uh, immediate uh, a care area and also not to try to transport him in a very disorderly way because transportation is very vital in patients with acute head trauma and most patients who receive prompt neurosurgical care following an acute head injury do well and they can get back to be amongst us in the society but any delay or any uh, uh, delay in initiation of treatment would result in mortality and morbidity, which is not acceptable these days. So my message is, when you see an accident, act fast, act properly, and take him to the right place. Thank you, Doctor. I uh, I know and uh, understand that our viewers would have uh, absorbed all your information you've shared with us today. Uh, thank you for your time. And uh, viewers, uh, we will see you next time uh, with another interesting topic. Until then, take care and stay safe.